Hi, I'm here in Birmingham with uh, Dr. Mike Galsworthy. Um, you run a couple of campaigns yep. in relation to trying to stop Brexit, is that correct? Yes, we um, run two campaigns. The first is Scientists for EU and then the second is NHS Against Brexit, which was formerly known as Healthier in the EU. So during the referendum campaign, both of these campaigns were for Remain, tackling science and tackling health. Afterwards, it was mainly about communicating the damage, representing those communities, building plans for after Brexit. But we are where we are, which is the government have hit a brick wall. It looks like all options are messy. So now both campaigns are vehemently against Brexit, for ditching Brexit, hence the renaming of Healthier in the EU to just NHS against Brexit, because that is what the majority of that community thinks now. And I think it's interesting, we find ourselves in a pub, yeah. Wellington pub in Birmingham, um, on the first day of the Tory party conference. And we've just both been at um, a march, yep. um, the EU in Brum march, yes. um, against Brexit. Yep. And I think it's interesting how we, you know, you as a scientist, as someone who cares about the health service, me um, as an environmentalist um, and someone who spends most of my t you know, time trying to tackle climate change, I guess are both brought together by this common issue. Yep. And, I, and I, you know, for environmentalists and those tackling climate change, I think what is so worrying about the situation is the UK has been a major player in the European Union in developing Europe's position on climate and around environmental legislation. So where, 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 do we, where does that leave us if we do Brexit? It's a very similar situation with science where we've been in the driving seat of big multinational collaborations and also health where our NHS is embedded in a lot of these frameworks of collaboration from cross-border healthcare to medicines with the European Medicines Agency. Um, and the research and innovation and the medicine supply and radioisotope supply that all goes around that. We've been part of a framework for 40 years. Um, we've been a lead voice in that framework, we've been building it up and we are international like that. So now we are being plucked from the driving seat and pulled out. So like with environmentalism, like with science, like with health, we're going from a position where we've been driving it to a position where we might not be in the framework so the guarantees are gone and also our voice is gone and that's the dangerous thing. The Brexiteers, I mean they've talked about a green Brexit. Yeah. I, I, I struggle with that concept and I guess what I worry about is a lot of our environmental progress, clean yeah. seas, clean beaches, clean air, mm -hmm. I mean the fact that the UK is a leader in getting off of coal, have actually come from European legislation and the fact that there, there is a body Court of Justice, which can enforce that legislation, yes. not just against us, but all EU yes. member states. Yes. So the psychology here is with, with green Brexit or with, or with more free trade or things like that, the fundamental concept of the Brexit is, is here is the UK and here is the EU above it keeping us down, repressing us. If we get rid of this, then the UK can shoot up and go free. Whereas actually, the situation is more like here is the UK and here is the EU under it because here's the frameworks that we've been weaving together to guarantee our basic standards and we can always go higher in green yeah. science we can always open up more other bilateral trade deals that aren't full free trade deals we can always spin out other science collaborations on top of this basic framework that gives us a powerful position in the world so when it comes to green brexit this is a bit of uh, marketing by Michael Gove in order to try and appeal to his green audience, his countryside alliance, who would otherwise be very resistant to the threats of Brexit. But the truth is that Sajid Javid, just in a, a cabinet meeting recently, was saying that if we come up to no-deal Brexit, we would be acting workers' rights and environmental protections in order to just <laughs> cut themselves as much slack as they can, to hoover in as much money as they can, even if it is destructive to the very social and environmental fabric which we've been trying to protect for decades. But then also so the realities are that it, it doesn't work like that. The UK is a leader in climate science. I mean, yes. We're about to see on the 8th of October the new um, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report, mm -hmm. which Europe, uh, sorry, UK climate scientists play a major part in. Sure. So, but they rely on a lot of funding from Europe and they work with a lot of their European colleagues. Yes. 
how does that continue or can it continue well <coughs> we'll try as best we can to make it continue because science is an international game it's a multi national game and particularly with climate science and environmental science you're talking about uh, fish and air and entities um, such as carbon Don't dioxide levels us. and you need many nations to get involved in order to yeah. produce a quality map of what's going on and to date like you were saying we do have been leading in that in the case of a no-deal Brexit our position on Horizon 2020 abruptly ends and changes to third country status and we will not be able to lead European Research Council grants, Mary Curie grants, small um, SME instrument grants and also our leadership, our coordination ability on those is jeopardised. I've just come back from San Francisco a couple of weeks ago, the Global Climate Action Summit organised by California's Governor Jerry Brown and the whole you know, major reason for that summit is to show to the world that despite Trump pulling out of the Paris Agreement, yep. the US economy is still in. And, yes. you know, one of my All fears, the state by state, you know, initiative yeah. by initiative, they're, they're doing it on that granular yeah. level. Yeah. Which is you know, yeah. brilliant and it's a ma major initiative, but they have to do it because of that, yeah. that sort of ideological approach which you begin to see signs of with our Brexiteers. And if mm -hmm. we have to do a trade deal with Donald Trump's America, you know, how long is our leading position on climate change going to stand up to that? Which is so frustrating because we pioneered, you know, binding legal targets on climate, yes. the Climate Change Committee. Yes. Um, and we, we've been, you know, we were right up until the referendum selling that as an approach across Europe. It's, you know. So this is another one of the things which is the legal framework that we put ourselves into in order to guarantee those basics with, for example, the quality of air that we breathe. Now, London has been breaching that consistently, but our activists can take our government to court over that because of the EU and in the EU we have those international treaties that we have signed to so um, activists can take our government to court over contracts breached. British activists. If we, yes, exactly. British activists have extra power because of the EU, because the international nature of signing contracts if it's just governmental promises you know we will go for this target then then where's the contract by which you can sue them so that safety net goes um, and then if we do trade deals with Donald Trump where we actually deliberately undermine our standards then suddenly we're in, we're in a difficult situation now in America like you were saying there is this pushback against what Donald Trump is doing but that's because all of those states have power. They own have, they all have their own legislative power in order to ensure things at the state level. We don't have that kind of power within the UK. So what our government decides largely neuters uh, a lot of the the, 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 the bottom-up efforts that we can engage in. Well, those US states also have the power to take their federal government to court and vice versa to sort of enforce <coughs> standards. Yes. Yeah. You know, which again applies in the European Union. So, I mean, just to finish here, because it's yep. an incredibly important conversation, I was part of something, um, an environmentalist campaign for Remain in the run-up to the referendum. Yep. That doesn't seem to exist anymore, and I think that yep. might be a surprise to many from the climate and environmental community watching this, that there isn't a climate and environmental based yeah. campaign um, I mean there is there is for the health service there is for scientists but not for the environmental movement and there is now for tech as well that's tech. something that during the referendum campaign I wanted to get going so there was environmentalists for Europe during the referendum campaign it was ironically headed by Stanley Johnson Boris Johnson's father because he was an M MEP that put in a lot of legislation around uh, protection of the environment and protection of wildlife but that has slipped away that should get reinstated especially when you have um, brilliant people at, for example friends of the earth that have really been hammering on about this I think it's probably time to bring that back I would, I would, I would nudge you and encourage you to do something along those lines because that community is very anxious that overlaps with the farmers as well I, I would go for that because that voice needs to be heard right about now. So, well, you heard it here. Um, if you are watching this, if you are from the environmental community or the climate community in the UK, you know, we need to start campaigning. Get together. Obviously. First thing, you just set up your Twitter account. That's the first thing you do. Set up a Twitter account. Let all of us know. We'll all promote it. You can go for a Facebook page as well. Then have a few events. We can help you call press to those events. 
you know, there is a community and ecosystem already waiting for the different sectors to drag and drop in. A call to arms. A, indeed. I, I, I call you to arms. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Mike, thank you. Um, Thanks very much. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Um, there'll be more videos. Please get involved. We'd love to get your comments on this, particularly Mike's call to arms. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers.